we are reading verse 93 from Sri Sri Milap Kusumanjali. Oh, Devi. When will you affectionately give me the remnants of your chewed beetle from your mouth into mine? Looking all around to check if anybody sees it. Oh, Devi, when will you affectionately give me the remnants of your chewed beetle from your mouth into mine? Looking all around to check if anybody sees it. Notes. Both during visions and after their disappearance, Sri Raghunath's heart remains filled with an unbroken desire to attain the nectarian service of Sri Radha. Gaudiya Vaishnava aspirants should do bhajan while keeping this aspiration alive. The desires on a person's mind will ultimately come out in the form of acts in the field of action in the same form and nature as it was cherished by the mind. Similarly, the picture of the transcendental desires that an aspirant devotee has on his mind will be drawn on the slate of his heart by Yoga Maya. So also with those aspiring for Sri Radha's service. Radhe, Radhe. Maybe you can say something to this part. Very interesting what Ananda Das Babaji is saying here because he is showing that. Srila Raghunadas is always in Manjari Bhav, if he is in his Manjari Swarup or not. He is always fixed in Manjari Bhav. So if we understand the kiss, which is actually transferring the jeweled battle from Swamini's mouth into mine, written here, then we should definitely be in uh, right consciousness. We accept as a kinkari this Mahaprasad. We will not accept it in our material body. This is not possible. So Srila Anandadas Babaji is giving a very, very nice hint that Srila Raghunath is never in bodily consciousness. 
is always completely aware that he is the manjuri of our that's why he is lamenting when he is coming to his pilgrimage. Otherwise, how it could be? If he would feel good in bodily consciousness, he would not lament. But he immediately laments. As soon as he understands, oh my God, I'm back in my sadhakadeha, immediately he is praying, please, 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 let me go back in the direct service. I think we should consider this again and again and again, just to get used to this mental uh, platform which is actually needed to cherish. There are so many other problems. Please, Suniti and I don't know, Gaur Gauranga Sundara, you're also here, Udava, all devotees, please give your your nectar and yes, let us take part. Thank you for this beautiful reminder that's eternally our reminder to really check ourselves, check myself. Am I in the under the guidance of Yoga Maya in my spiritual aspirations or in the guidance of Mahamaya? And not to mix it up, but be honest and you know, check, check. Always do my homework as do the is saying and at the same time we can have our prayers and our cry tears for these feelings that Srimati Radhika is giving through grace and uh, we can have hope and I like this sentence that Kishori was just reading the picture of the transcendental desires that a practicing devotee has on his mind will be drawn on the slate of his heart by Yoga Maya. So that is uh, such a nice picture. And you are an artist also, Gauravani. So Yoga Maya is recognizing the desires that we have in our devotional service, and she is fulfilling them. She's giving the pictures and she's giving the blessings when the time is right, when the mercy is ripe, that these pictures will be, these desires will be come into reality. And that is such a beautiful hope to never lose the hope, even though I feel completely absorbed in my bodily consciousness, in my senses and in my mind, but the hope will never stop. There are so many verses like that by Rupa Goswami and also Sanatana Goswami, where they are mentioning this, that even I am a very wicked, fallen soul, but since I have heard about your glory, Srimati Radhika, I have the desire, I want to be a Darcy. And please hear my prayers. And um, that is such a blessing that hope against hope, we pray that one day Srimati Radhika, Guru Manjari, will give us hints and signs how to serve and to come close to Srimati Radhika. Gurudev said this morning, when I was asking him about this verse, he said that it is about closeness. How to be close to Srimati Radhika. So much closeness is involved in this feelings of 
of mindness towards her that she will be so also inspired to bring the dasi close to her heart and find the right moment to give the service of this closeness that needs already like a very intimate close relationship right so i can check myself how is my relationship with shrimati radhika how close i feel how close is my meditation how much feelings i have in my prayers in my relationship with her and what is there to improve this is a very personal personal relationship with shrimati radhika that it's very also individual so that was good if uh, comment that to come to such a close relationship we need to be like you said doravani in the spiritual senses and that needs to be a uh, prayed or begged and cried for <laughs> and the spiritual senses also means i don't want to enjoy i want you to enjoy i want you swamini that you enjoy the enjoyment of your beloved this is my enjoyment radhe I, I beg Udava to put me in the uh, translation room because I had some problems. If I, I'm interrupting you, sorry. Thank you, Ramani. Thank you. And actually, in this connection, we can also see in us what is our tendency. Do we like to enjoy that we can speak these high topics? do we enjoy mm-hmm. how far we came do we enjoy that we are so learned do we enjoy that it seems that we are very near to radharani or are we we have to ask ourselves no one will ask us actually it's our point we have to check do we enjoy to be so emotional because when we hear from radharani and of course some emotions are inside if you are near but do we like to show them a little bit further make a big show out of our emotions or something like this all these things i don't want to touch anyone personally so i hope no one feels disturbed I just talking about myself. So we have to ask us this again and again and again because we have to correct our course when we fly to Radharani's lotus feet, right? And we are very lucky that we have Gurudev who is helping us and all you your association actually is helping us to again and again come on the right way direct way thank you very much for your help and your prayers jai shri radhe it will allow me to say something just short it's very nice sentence which kishore ji read <clears throat> desires on person's mind so it the mind has a three function to think to feel and to will or the desires this is the three basic functions of the mind 
And knowing that Raghunath <coughs> was writing Mana Shiksha, how to focus the thinking, feeling, and desires in the heart, how to focus them on Radha Dasi. But because whatever is in the mind, in the form of thinking, feeling, and willing, will be automatically seen in activity. So this progression of the mind and his functions, devotee should know, because it will help him to focus his thinking, feeling, and desires for acting. Like Gauravani said, it's up to us that we act without hidden motives for personal enjoyment. Because we have to know that whatever is in mind, it will come out on our dealings, in our actions. And we have here perfect example of our Acharya Rasik devotee who doesn't have anything else in his mind. His mind is Vritti circling around his thinking about Radhika, feeling about Radhika, desiring to serve Radhika, and naturally he wants to act according to desires of his mind and his heart. Chitta Vrit. So when we approach to pure devotee, to Sadhu, he can immediately see on our eyes, on our face, in our eyes, in our action, what is in our mind, <laughs> what we are thinking, what we are feeling, and what we desire. So like Gauravani said, I like it very much, it's up to us to always check it. And it's up to us to use this opportunity of Sadhu Sangha, Vaishnava Sangha, this beautiful sh rasa, Shastras, to feel up our feelings, our thoughts, and our desires. We have to feed them. Yesterday, Sunitiji said very nicely to, to put the fuel in, a, in the car, to put the fuel of desire of Manjari Bhav because we have to learn how to think, how to feel, and how to act like a Manjari. And this process will be seen in our activity. Very clearly will be seen. Even we can see if we are enough honest. <laughs> Even I can see. So, this mind, subject, is a very important because in the case of sadhu, there is no difference between mind and heart. Because when we say chitta vrit, we think on mind like chitta, and heart like chitta. And they are together in Manjari Bhav, focused in beloved Radhika. So proper feeding, putting the fuel is very important because this fuel will model our thinking, our feeling, our desires. And then the picture of transcendental desires, of aspirant, will appear 
on his heart by the action of yoga mind, not by his own endeavor. He is trying, he is searching, he is contemplating, he is correcting himself, but by the mercy of yoga maya, let's say yoga maya, because it's written here, yoga maya. <laughs> then this transcendental picture will stuck, will glue on his heart and mind. Because we have material desires and transcendental desires, material thoughts and transcendental thoughts, material feelings and transcendental feelings. And we have to learn and we have to be infused with these transcendental thoughts, feelings, desires, and automatically activity or service will come out. So that's, I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Sripa Sanatan Goswami writes in Brihat Bhagavatamrita, those who give up all other spiritual practices and goals and desire only the supreme goal of Sri Radha's service, always chant her name in Sankirtan and automatically attain their desired perfection. Those who give up all other spiritual practices and goals and desire only the supreme goal of Sri Radha's service, always chant her name in Sankirtan and automatically attain their desired perfection. If someone wants also, because it's provoked me, <laughs> I cannot resist. It's very clearly written here that all spiritual practices and goals of Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha, four main goals for, of humanity, must be give up and be focused only on fifth goal of life. Prima. Pure, selfless, love. And now Sanatana Goswami is very, very, very nicely explaining okay, which kind of prema, supreme goal, but which kind of prema? Of Sri Radha. Because he wants to raise up the consciousness of Sadaka, who already gave up these four goals of life, who, is fi who wants to fix himself in prema, he wants to, even him, raise up his consciousness, say, yes, but which kind of prema? To whom? To Sri Radha. That person always chant her name in Sankirtana with full consciousness what he is chanting, why he is chanting, and what he wants to attain 
with this chanting of Sankirtana. Because without goal, we cannot chant properly. But when devotee has a goal, he always wants to glorify the personality, personification of his goal. He wants to glorify because Sankirtana is the most intimate ingredients of all sadhanas. Most intimate. But if there is connection and love. So first we should define what we really want. Dharma, it's okay. Artha, according to Dharma, it's also okay. Kama, according to Dharma, it's also okay. It's prescribed in scriptures. All Vedas are speaking about this. And finally, when everything, when we become disgust of everything, we will try to attain moksha. This is progression of human life. A religious progression, not a demoniac, religious. I want to enjoy, but in dharmic way, religious way. I want to earn money, but in a dharmic way. I want to spend this, enjoy this. And finally, I want to go in, in retirement, moksha. But is it the goal of my existence? And acharyas are giving us solution. No. Prema for your soul, my dear Goranga Sundar. Prema for your soul. Jirjago, Jirjago. Because all these pursuits, four pursuits, our goals are for your body. And when you, when small desire of your prema appears in your mind and heart, yoga maya will act and put you in favorable situations. that you receive Sadhu Sangha, Vaishnava Sangha, Rasik Sangha, which help you to attain these small, 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 small desires. And finally, in your heart, maybe, my dear Jiva, will appear desire, strong desire for Radharam. And this is also a reflection of Yakta. Yoga Maya, which is coming through Guru Parampara, through Vaishnava. So this verse, I'm sorry that I took your time, but it's very clearly explaining the goal of life, fifth goal of life, and the useless attempts to attain four goal of lives, which materialistic persons like me are always hankering. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. <clears throat> so nice, Gora Sundara. Radhe Radhe, everyone. So nice what you said. <laughs> I just joined, came by. Radhe so nice Radhe Radhe. So nice that you said this. And I just wanted to add that actually it is very important that we, uh, when we chant, you said it's a very intimate process, so it is very helpful. Even if we know our Swarup or if we don't know our Swarup, it is most helpful if we know our eternal form. If we don't know it yet, we have to hanker for it. So this chanting with self-identification is very, very important that we know when we chant. And Gurudev always said, first we are on the platform of the soul. And then we chant on the soul that we are not this body and that we are an eternal part of the Lord and all these things. And then we progress towards this Abhiman, this identification. 
that I am the Sita Deha, that I am this. And you will see that when you, it, it, only when you mentally conceive of your form, the chanting will go much smoother and it will be much more powerful. Even if you have not revealed Sita Pranali, uh, have not received Sita Pranali, it is very, very beneficial to see yourself in whatever form, in our case, in a sweet manjari form, which is not always easy for male, like me, male bodies. But it is very, very beneficial when you chant the holy name and, and knowing or hankering for who you really are. This is very, this I just want to tell you, is very, very powerful, even if you just think about it. And sorry, we have some internet problems at the moment. Thank you for all your valuable inputs and sharings. <laughs> Those who give up all other spiritual practices and goals and desire only the supreme goal of Sri Radha's service. Always chant her name in Sankirtan and automatically attain their desired perfection. This is a this is a very important point. Sorry to interrupt. This is a very very important point, and it is it goes together with Rupa Goswami saying Sita Deha, uh, uh, Sadaka, and Sita Deha. So this desired. Can you read this last part again, please? This is such a very important point. Just they the last always, part. They always chant her name in Sankirtan, and automatically attain their desired perfection you see this is so important this is such a difference if you have a desired perfection or if you wait until one day this perfection may enter your heart so this is very very good if we have this desired perfection Rupa Goswami is saying we should follow the, the uh, Rag Atmika devotees the perfect examples of Brindavan and we should hanker after a certain mood and we should always desire a certain mood. And this is so important that we fix ourselves desiring this certain mood. It is not said here automatically there will come perfection. Yeah, what perfection? So it is said desired perfection. And all raga, this is my, my humble little, little tiny realization, all raga bhakti is depending on desire or lopa or greed. So if, you, if I have no desire, I cannot chant. If I have a desire, I can practice Manjari Bhav. So this desired perfection is, is such a very, very important point. And I was not brought up like that. In my first years in Krishna consciousness, it was always said, yeah, you wait and you wait and you wait and it will come. It may be, it's true, it's not a wrong way. But better it is if you meet someone and you follow this one and you, you desire a certain type of devotion and a certain type of bhav. Rupa Goswami is saying a certain type of bhav to perfect. Tarun Baba, very, very nice point. Um, actually, I just remember even on the material platform, if you want to have success in all schools of success, you learn that it's very important to have a desire. And like Goranga Go Sundara said before, your mind is actually moving around. Your thoughts are going to the desire. 
your feelings are connected with the desire. And in this way, while it's your wish, I will do it. It's going in the direction of the desired direction. In this way, automatically, it was written here, automatically attain the desired perfection. This is not only on the spiritual platform. It's all in all, it's actually the law of attraction. It's a law made by whom you can imagine. So it's a law who is perfect and Yoga Maya will help you on that platform, which is written here, or Maha Maya will help you on the other platform. It depends, but it's actually a law. So it's, it's completely right in all manners. Whatever you want, whatever you desire, you have to do that, actually. This is very important to come very soon to your desired goal. What to speak of? <laughs> I'm Radha's maidservant. And it's written here, it's, it's enough to just think like that, because if you think like that, feelings will arose in your heart. You cannot think about this without feelings. It's not possible, isn't it? I mean, at least slight feelings are coming if you consider what you want to do, why you want to go there. That's why we hear all these lilas and we hear about the qualities of Radharani in Radhara Sudanidi. And if we hear about her qualities, the desire is arising. Yes, yes, I want to be near to this person. I want to be like her. I really want to go this way. And in this way, feelings will start and your desire will be more clear and the more clear your desire is the more clear are your feelings and the more clear is your action your willing and then it goes fast actually otherwise it is also possible but it takes time often oftentimes the question is coming up how do i develop this desire how do i how do i develop this lopa how do i develop this creed and chose or choose a desired perfection and then rupa goswami is saying that the cause of all of that is the mercy of guru and vaishnava so this desire and this lopa can only grow and progress by the mercy of gurudev this is the only cause of raganuga bhakti the mercy of krishna and his devotees so this we should always have in the head that we cannot do anything on our own. So we are beggars. So we beg for the mercy of Guru and Vaishnavas. And then this Lopa may manifest, hopefully in our hearts, hopefully in mind soon. So this is which is very important to understand that, that we need someone, like you said, Goravani, in the material life. You need a professor, you need a teacher. You need always someone who can have the flag waving in front of you of your desired goal so in spiritual life even more we need someone who has the same mood the same desired path and we follow him and we cling to his foots and we will feed and we will really have to desire the kripa of guru and the vaishnavas and then this raganuga bhakti it can really nicely flow yes it's true <clears throat> And I want to add also Tarun Baba and Gauravani that I need a loving feeling for that, for all of that. Because desire comes from love. Maybe it starts with understanding it would be good. But it would be, you know, even better if I can feel, if I can feel this attraction if I can feel the friendship with the Vaishnavas, who are such wonderful persons, I just, I just realize it also again and again every day that all the Vaishnavas here in coming and to Padikrama on, you know, around Radha. Mohan, even and we go together to Gurudev and we do all these services together. That these are so beautiful personalities, I am so attracted by them. 
And if I don't have their association and I miss something very important in my life, I feel in a separation feelings or like our Udava, he's been coming now the last years very intensely. And, you know, it seems that Gurudev is showering him with so many realizations and so many feelings in his heart. And then I, I always admire that and I feel, wow, See, if someone is so close and is sitting closely, then these feelings, they just go from one heart to the next. And that's how it happens. It's not a theoretical thing with the head or with the book. It's a personal relationship mm -hmm. and deep feelings of, of, of friendship that are developing and that somehow Shumate Radhika is looking and Radha Mohan are looking and they say, wow, they belong together and I don't want to miss them anymore either. <laughs> like this. This is a very, very excellent point, Suniti. Super nice. This is what it means to, we cannot imagine in the, we can, we, I, I cannot imagine how Radha and Krishna, we all know, we all have, at least I can speak for myself, we all have theoretical understandings, how they look, how they act when we hear it and we go into meditation. But practically from my heart, I don't know really how they look, but to develop this, like you said, this loving feeling, we need someone on the material plane in in uh, in like like a material plane. So this is actually the the function when it's said in in Samsara Dava Nana Lida Loka, when the clouds are becoming thick and the mercy is becoming thick, then Gurudev and the Vaishnavas they appear. So we need someone. We need we need someone in front of us because our mind is so limited. And so fallen that we need someone. Guru is never material. Don't get me wrong. This was not my intention. But we need someone that we can interact with. And like you said, if we don't act properly with all living beings, and especially with the Vaishnavas, then it will be a hindrance. It will be very difficult to develop loving feelings. We cannot go love the Vaishnavas and hate the Jivas. So we have to find a balance to, to be loving in the material world and also loving the Vaishnavas and especially loving Gurudev. So this is because we cannot imagine the dealings of Radha and Krishna and how they look. We, this will enter into our heart from someone who has seen them and who has interaction with them and who can transmit this path into our heart. When we are, like you said, when we are attentive and humble and, and loving. So this is actually what, what we need. We need someone who can give us like like this you know this give us this wonderful presence into our hands other otherwise it is just kyana 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 it is nothing but theory and theoretical knowledge we need practical guidance and someone who we can follow like sadhu maharaj like my Gurudev, like narayan maharaj like Prabhupada. so we these people only have one function and this is to shower their mercy upon the falling soul, fallen souls. When it is said, when the cloud becomes thick, then this mercy, this cloud bank of mercy, this is what is actually called Madhurya Kadambini, this cloud bank of mercy personifies in Gurudev. And by his love, we, may, we have the chance to also develop this love. Thank you very much for this explanation, but my wife is crying. <laughs> Please, a little bit slow. She's crying, she cannot follow. I'm sorry, others are much younger. Yes, yeah, sorry. sorry, sorry. We are in golden age and we cannot be so fast. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I love you, but so, please. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I'm forced to do it. She's crying. <laughs> no, no, I understand. Sorry, I, I apologize. <laughs> I like very much what you said, Tarun Baba, about um, developing the greed and being the beggar um, and getting inspired by more advanced Vaishnavas. I remember my first time in Vrindavan, mm -hmm. Tarun was there and I was so much in awe of, oh my God, this person is so smart. He knows everything. 
I know, always not- reading and he can always discuss with Gurudev and I don't understand anything. I don't even understand the words. Like I actually don't understand what they are talking about. Only like, I don't know, With I guess with many of us, I know with Kanai it was also like this, that at first when you come to this path, you are totally from another world and you don't understand only the the only thing you understand is the feeling is like oh that person has this wonderful special feeling and i want to feel this too even if i don't understand what is varup what is sadaka what is anything and tarun was the one who also inspired me to beg to beg gurudev for diksha I remember we went to Radhakund and Tarun was sharing that like he does very casually by the way saying like yeah it's all very nice what you're doing but there's no point of doing anything if you don't have diksha like your life starts then why why you're doing anything at all and I felt like really like really it went so deep in my heart what he said just this by the way that from this moment i started to like prepare myself to ask gurudev even though i didn't even know what it is but i was like i need diksha i know i know i need this (laughs) so it was very wonderful and things like this have really changed my life where where Vaishnavas inspire me to do something that I don't even know what it is, but I have to do it. And then I see that life can change. But this is such such a wonderful example, Kishori. I am I'm yeah, I'm a sh- I'm a little bit ashamed, but you know that this is the point Rupa Goswami is saying. You made such a wonderful point. You don't know, you don't even know all the technical terms, all this. Yeah, all this super nice, blah, blah, blah. But Rupa Goswami is saying, the moment you decide that I want this too, is the start of Raganuga Bhakti. So th- this is such a very, now I'm talking slower. <laughs> this is such a very, very important point. <laughs> so actually... This is what it means. There is no, there is no school of qualification to enter Raganuga Bhakti. This is a totally wrong concept. You know, this is what you said. You heard me. I'm a fool. I was, I had the opportunity to be close with Gurudev and you heard all these things, but you felt in your heart by the mercy of Gurudev, not by myself, but by the mercy of Gurudev, you heard this transcendental sound vibration Prabhupada is hundred and thousand times saying this this transcendental sound vibration and you thought okay I want this and at, from that moment on Rupa Goswami is giving you the promise from that moment on Raga Nuka Bhakti is starting and we should not listen to all the naysayers and all the criticizers and all these things you follow your heart it is hundred percent bona fide if you hear from a Satguru and from a sat vaishnava the truth about radha and krishna and vrindavan you have all the right and the qualification to take up that what mahaprabhu came to give and we don't need to discuss this with anyone else this is what you said kishore is such a wonderful i'm glad this is on on video and audio because that is the starting point of Raghunuga Bhakti. This is it. That's all. And I was, of course, <laughs> pushing you in. I was a little bit in Radhakun saying, of course, Diksha is by because I saw by the mercy of my Gurudev, who was still there at that time, that you are right. It is the right moment to tell this to you. I would never tell this to anyone who would freak out. I knew that you were ready for this and I could feel that you were eager for this and it didn't take long i think and then you took diksha and it is true without diksha 
Good luck. <laughs> so in the connection of the mercy of Tarun Baba, I have to tell you a little story also, because it's true what you say, Kishori. I was sitting at my home completely in Krishna consciousness, frustrated, you know, and he was living just two villages or three villages away from me. And his wife, Govinda Priya, is disciple of Sadhu Maharaj. So Sadhu Maharaj was there to just take a little rest one or two days. And he called me and said something like, Hmm, maybe you want to come to us. Here's somebody from Brindavan and he has time and he's a very nice person. And maybe you want to learn to know him like that. So I went there and this was the first meeting with our Gurudev Saru Maharaj. And he was just sitting in front of me like Tarun Baba is sitting now on the couch and on the other side was sitting Gurudev, yes, on this chair. And he was just reading my mind. He was just telling me everything which was on my mind. I mean, the important things, of course, connected with spiritual desires. And I was a little bit shocked because one week before I made this prayer that actually Krishna, if you want to have me another guru, then he has to be from Vindavan, he has to be a citadel, he has to be he has to come to my house, invite me here in front of you, Radhisham. I had Radhisham deities and so I made this prayer and I, I, I made a, a huge list of checking this person before. So he was actually the one who brought the message. And he was actually also insisting on that because we met. But I went again and, you know, I was thinking something started. Well, maybe this could be the person I was talking about when I made all these uh, big lists, what he has to do. And then he called me and said, you know, he's still there. Why don't you think about the chance to get initiation, I mean, he's still there, you know, so he has time. So, and then I told him, yes, I was actually considering this, but he has to come to me because he has to give me initiation in front of my deities because this is this was on my list. I was not telling him about the list, but it was my point on the list. So I said, yes, if he will come to 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 me and he will ring the bell. Because this was also on the list. He has to come to me, ring the bell. He has to be from Vindavan, pure soul. And and if I offer him a, a, a Vyasasan, he has to say, no, we are all sitting on the same platform. And if if I offer him some prasadam, he has to take what we take on the same platform. And, you know, the whole list was there. And actually, Gurudev went to all these checklists, like, you know, just as he knew it as he was reading it. Ah, okay. Mm, okay. He yes. knew it. He knew it. Yes. <laughs> he was reading it. So in this way, yes, Tarun Baba's mercy is actually also the cause that I took shelter at this uh, lotus feet of our Gurudev. So I know he is a very nice person and he is really uh, trying to but just casual, normal people and not think themselves something special like me, for example. Thank you very much for hearing this little story. I remember, I remember this time, Goravani, very well, very, very well. It was a wonderful time, very, very wonderful. Sorry, I can connect with the words. Radhika is giving remnants to her maid servants, but they also feed each other with their, with this remnants. So I also want to glorify my dear brother, 
which I met, whom I met this summer, first time in my life, because of him, Ramani, and we, because of his wife also, who wrote the book, Beauty of Real Love, it was our first contact with Gurudev. So he gave me the remnants, which I very greedy ate. And we have been so happy, actually, that finally, after so many years, we at least received information of existence of such personality. So this is, my dear Tarunji, this is your remnants, and I'm so happy. I know you received <laughs> the remnants, but this is the mood of Manjaris. They accept remnants, but they also distribute and putting even in each other mouth. This is for you, this is for you, this is for you. So this is loving mood. I'm sorry, we are putting you in a situation where you don't feel comfortable. But I feel very, I feel very comfortable because <laughs> I know that this is all the mercy of my Baba. If you remember, there, I, I, I think Kish Kishori was with us, Suniti was with us. We went to Baba, I think 20, 25, 25 people went into Baba's room at Radakun. And he was like, what is going on? All Westerners, all young people, you know, and he was in ecstasy. I mean, you remember this, right? And he told me spe specifically to bring all these people to Radakund. So you can you can put me in the front. I am my ego is of course very happy, but the ego is an idiot. I know that actually this is all the workings of Baba, and I am doing not enough, but I am doing as much as I can. But Baba wanted to do this. Baba wanted me. I don't know why, but wanted me as a little instrument to 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 somehow or another connect everyone with his beloved words. And this is happening now by the mercy, especially of Gurudev. So this is all what I can say. This is just all these remnants, all these lilas, all these inspirations coming from those four lotus feet, from Baba, from Gurudev, from Sadhu Maharaj. So when I, when I met, you know, when I met Sadhu Maharaj, I, I wrote it in the introduction of this book of uh, Beauty of Real Love. So I was already connected to my Baba. And then I met Sadhu Maharaj in Spiringen, in, in this uh, a little ashram Krishna Chandra had there, you know. And I was, I was, he said to my wife, he said, okay, uh, uh, there is a Sadhu from India visiting. It would be cool if you come. So Govinda Priya and myself, we went there. And it was really, it was 100% love at first sight. I met him. And I was astonished, astonished, because, you know, when you go to Radakund, I'm a very extroverted person. I, I go to Baba and I speak with him because I somehow or another, I have this courage. But it is not so easy to approach Baba because they protect him in Radakund. But to see Sadhu Maharaj in Spearing and with Krishna Chandra on this little house, this little, yeah, this was, this was so intimate, so personal. And we watched him, Govinda Priya watched him many, many, every day, you know, watching him and seeing him interacting with people. And when we left, it was, it was torment. To leave him, it was unbelievable. So this is when you meet some, someone of this caliber, you feel that Gurudev and that Krishna are guiding you towards what is really in your heart, what you really desire. Because you only meet those who you want, you have to meet, you know, and these are, like Sadhu Maharaj and Narayan Maharaj I met. These are Radhika's maid servants, which we have and still have at least one is left. Sadhu Maharaj is still left uh, in, in, in our material platform, seeing him. But this is really what it is all about, to follow such great personalities and to hang on to them and to receive their mercy. And then what you said, Goranga Sunda, to give it away. If you keep it, you will try out. You have to give away everything you give. In the material world, you will be bankrupt. <laughs> In the spiritual life, you will be very rich. This is my little realization. Radhe, Radhe. 
today I Tarun mean, Baba get the mercy from the Vaishnavas. I cannot resist also to say some words <laughs> about my Tarun Baba. I think that he got the most important point more early than most of us. We didn't know about Swarup and Swarup Sedi. We are stuck in the ISKCON consciousness of being a Krishna devotee. But Tarun Baba, very early on, he moved on to go for the final goal. Very early on, he went to Anantaras Babaji, took shelter there, because he knew what is the final goal. And he just spoke about Govinda Priya, who wrote this book. I'm still reading in that. Everybody knows that. But nobody knows Govinda Priya. She is so humble and sweet that she never show in the picture. And Tarumava, when I came to Dol all the years, I so much enjoyed the prasadam all the time because Tarun Baba was in charge to cook one week for 300, 400 devotees. So, he is a great Vaishnava, great cook, and yeah, today, everybody, I could not resist <laughs> also to say something. Rade, my dear, Rade, Rade. So, Tarun Baba, you see, we missed you. Huh? For a whole time, you were not here showing up. I know it's time and you have a lot to do, but we missed you. At least you can feel that, that we missed you. And of course, we also missed your Shakti, although we know that she's very shy and hiding always. Like she listens. She, <clears throat> she listens. But I have to tell you very frankly and honestly, on a, yeah. I have to say the last, yeah, two, three, four months, I must say were not very easy for me. It was not a very easy time, you know. That what what I wanted to say. My father passed away. I had this stupid, uh, yeah, call, call, colleague, and operation. So it was not a very, very amusing time. And of course, I know that actually I should have taken more shelter at that time but if you are honest you are honest if you are not honest you are not honest i cannot go somewhere where is not my mind so if i i would have, of course i could have sit in and listened but i was not in the right mind in the right mind to do that this is what you have to forgive me but it was yeah like i say it, it still is not a very it's just four weeks since my father passed and now we are selling our house and all these memories. So it's not a very easy time right now, but I try my best to to be strong and to be in 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 the bath. And therefore I try to come as often as possible, you know. But it was not it was not that I was yeah, I don't I'm not you know, I don't care, I don't like, blah blah. So there will also come better times. It's all okay. Thank you all. Can you continue to read a little bit, Kishori? Yes. Those who simply think, I am Radha's maidservant, and consider this attainment to be the perfection of everything will automatically attain a result which is beyond fancy.
the practice needed to attain that extraordinary result is the loving congregational chanting of the holy name of Rasa Rasik. Shri Krishna, the relisher of the Rasa dance. Nam Sankirtan is the best means to attain this perfection for it's full of flavor and full of bliss. Even in the material world, it is seen that when one discusses the qualities of a certain great person, that person may be pleased, but he will not respond. But when one calls him by name, whether it is in praise or in blasphemy, he will immediately respond even though he may be far away. The best way to attain Sriman Mahaprabhu's greatest gift of Radha Dasya is the sweet practice of Nam Sankirtan. As written in Chaitanya Charitamrita, joyfully the Lord said, Listen, O Svarupa and Ramananda Roy, in the age of Kali, Nam Sankirtan is the best way to salvation. Swamini thinks to herself, Tulsi is doing nice service. I must reward her. But what if Lalita and my other girlfriends would see it? I would die of shame. So, she looks in all four directions before she pushes her jeweled beetle nuts from her mouth into Tulsi's mouth in an unseen way, while Tulsi hangs the necklace back on her neck. In this way, she gives her dear Tulsi a just reward for her loving service. It is the same betel leaf that Shyama Sundar pushed into her mouth while he enjoyed with her. And Swamini knows how much Tulsi cherishes that. A quote from Chaitanya Charitamrita, Antya Lila 16. I cannot describe the value and the complete pride of the betel leaves Krishna eats. Whatever he spits out 
is called the essence of nectar. And he uses the gopis' mouths as spittoons. In these bitter leaves lie the savor of their lip nectar. This lip nectar of Krishna is most precious. And the life of anyone who obtains it is successful. Where can this lip nectar be relished to the utmost? Love is required for experiencing the sweetness of Krishna's sounds touch and flavors. Srila Jiva Goswami says, Krishna's sweetness is only relishable through pure love. But not everyone tastes it in the same way. My sweetness is ever fresh and each devotee relishes it according to the amount of his own love. Chaitanya Charitamrita. This is a very, very, if I may say, this is a very good point to say something and share something. Mahaprabhu here is saying that the devotees relish their love according to their bhav. So here also we have the excellence of Manjari bhav because the, um, it is said that those who love Krishna the most feel the greatest love. So that means Swamini is at the top of everything. Swamini Radhika has the most love for Krishna. So she cherishes the love most. So she is always full in bliss in Madana Maha, Madanakya Mahabhav. So here we see Mahaprabhu again hinting, and we as, as uh, followers of Rasik Gurus, we know that here Mahaprabhu is saying that actually Radhika has the most love of Krishna and the Manjaris who are so close with Radhika, they can attain that special love also. So this is such a wonderful thing that each can uh, love Krishna to the heart's capacity. And we have now the chance to be in the close circle of the one who loves Krishna most. So this is actually... Again, this is the excellence of Manjari Bhav. This is what we can we can attain. Uh, yes. Baba is saying love is required for experiencing experiencing the sweetness of Nama, Rupa, Guna, and Lila of beloved Ishtadev. Only through love not philosophy, not logic, not austerities, not vows, only through love, person can experience the name, form, beauty, sweetness of the form, quality of beloved Radhika or Ishtade, respectful Ishtade, and Lilas. So the love is most important ingredients. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I remember, is saying somewhere in the Chaitanya Charitamita, if person is doing something, but he doesn't change his heart, then it means that all activities are in vain. Changing the heart can only 
do love, not activity. If we are doing something with love, even the smallest thing, then our heart slowly will melt and change, or like we say, purify. So this love is so important. Baba is giving example love for Krishna, like a general instruction. But each devotee who has his respectful Ishtadev has to direct his love on Ishtadev, on Nama, Rupa, Guna, and Lil. So this love is the measurement of all spiritual success. It's real measurement, not numbers, not quantities, but the quality of love. And we can see here how much love existing between Radhika and Manjari. Because Radhika is looking, is there my, any of my Sakis around? If there is no Sakis in very confidential way, Radhika is sharing her remnants. So it means that confidential Closeness brings this confidentiality, which is very important for exchange and for sharing. We cannot speak about these subjects in general public because there is no mood which will bring closeness. But if there is closeness, it can be thousands of person, persons, and we can share the remnants which Radhika also shared to us. So this closeness, intimacy, also Radhika is showing here. She is looking around in four directions, ten directions, to see is there someone who is not belong to here. And then, when she is sure, then she puts the, her direct other Amrita in the mouth. And this is the kiss of Radhika. This is the embrace of Radhika. This kind of prashad is going directly to the heart. And what we sadhakas, neophytes, complete beginners, we have benefit of it because we receive these remnants through our ears. We are eating, we are drinking these remnants through our ears. And these remnants are going directly by the mercy of pure devotees in our hearts and slowly but surely this our heart is melting and melting and purifying. So this is the only sadhana. And this listening and this talking is Hari Nama Sankirtana. This is also Hari Nama because we are glorifying our beloved Ishtadev with Hari Nama Sankirtana in association of Sajatya Sankha. So this is also Harinama Sankirtana and glorifying our beloved Gurudev, Gurudevs. This is Harinama Sankirtana. It's not black and white. Only if we are singing and jumping and playing instruments and singing Hare Krishna, that this is only Harinama Sankirtana. Harinama Sankirtana is congregational glorification of beloved Ishtadev and those who are closed servants. Daddy, Daddy, I just want to say thank you, Baba. Wonderful. Gohanga Sunda for for you make us conscious about the what we are doing here, what is the right feelings and what is the right uh, depth in our bhakti because Gurudev also said this so often to me 
Don't think only when you have your mala in your hand, you are doing service. Don't think when you're only, you know, in the temple, you're doing service. You know, all what we do during the day and now, it is actually also the mercy to be able to do that and to be able to listen the sweetest words of all of your mouths and hearts. And um, at the same time, I feel I'm missing Gurudev because before he was always with us. So I'm feeling also separation mood a little bit or strongly, <laughs> let's say, honestly. But at the same time, I feel he wants this right now. So I accept it. And what it does also, it does make me more eager to go internal and you know all my desires now what i would have loved to ask him or what i would love to hear him about you know as we were so spoiled that in every sentence we can always ask him right gurudev right gurudev is it like this is it like this like little children or i feel myself like a little child but now it has to go internally and i can contact him or her there and carry like a precious relationship that is giving answers also and that is giving these feelings to feel this closeness is also a big treasure in our lives that now gurudev has given this to us you know these discussions these zoom meetings these precious vaishnavas these precious dasis aspiring for dasi bhav and at the same time we can uh, discuss between ourselves and i feel by the you know intensity of our feelings that we have for each other and the loving desire to uplift and to receive in these feelings we can even grow or i can i cannot say for anybody i just want to say i feel i can grow more quickly in the separation mood and this uh, you know like a child who is now be left by the mother to to try themselves <laughs> whatever you know this what i mean we are now the the children and we are the mother is looking from a distance and feeling and hearing um Gauravani was telling so nicely he had this desires on his heart that gurudev you know if somebody would come in this it was like this and actually by some mercy it was all fulfilled so i feel Jai Vrindavan, again, too high for this connection. <laughs> Should I continue while she comes back? Sri Vishwanath Chakravarti writes in his commentary on this verse. It is not the presence of some object that makes it relishable, but the power that the senses may have for taking it. No. We can also judge whether there is power in the senses to take the object when we see them taking them. So Baba, Baba is saying here that actually it sounds a little bit confusing, but Baba here is saying that actually the object itself is not what you said, but we 
have to make our senses strong. That means we have to spiritualize our senses that we can receive that precious gift of that object. For example, Radhika's lotus feet, they will always be there, but we have to spiritualize our senses to perceive them. So Baba here is encouraging us to really, really focus on our spiritual identity. And this is the Patra. This is the our heart, which has to be clean without holes, because it's not the problem of object, it's the problem of receiver. Receiver has to be prepared in the proper way to accept the object. Devotees, many devotees are reading the life of many saints, Raja saints, Navdip saints, and they can read actually the sometimes Radha, Krishna, Goranga, or Nitana, they appear in front of them, but they didn't recognize them. So it's not a problem of object. And then later they said, oh, what I did. <laughs> Such a mistake. Such a fool I am. My beloved appear in front of me. And I said, just go away. Go, go away. I'm in deep bhajan yet. You distract my bhajan. This is lilas. It, it can be many Things can be said about this, but the heart must be prepared. Sometimes devotees are thinking, no, if Radhika appears to me, then everything will be fine. I will attain perfection immediately, automatically. But it, yes and no. <laughs> yes. Of course, because this is the greatest mercy. But if the receptor is not prepared for such a gift, it will take a little bit more time. So this patra, the heart, chitta, must be clean. And all our acharyas are saying this. And like Tarunji said, what does it mean? Senses must be clean. It means heart. Mind has to be clean. And this is why we need Hari Nama Sankirtana. In association of pure devotees and devotees, in the same mood, loving mood. So this I wanted to say. In the same way, we cannot say that everyone will be able to take, appreciate or relish the sweetness of the Lord. Although it may be right before their eyes. In the form of the deity, or a picture. You see? That's the point. And we have to accept it. Otherwise, if we cannot accept this thing, we will go astray. Somehow. We should understand we are depending on Kripa, but in the same time, by the Kripa, we need pure heart. to receive this Kripa. So this is the <laughs> circle, and at least I understand this. Maybe it's wrong completely. I'm sorry. But it's not the problem of Guru, it's not the problem of Radhika, it's not the problem of object of love. I am who I am. And I have to prepare my consciousness, my senses, my heart, and also my love 
to properly receive it. And this is my sadhana. I'm just thinking about an example. Usually we are used to eat something and we have our special taste, what we eat and what we do not eat. And usually this is actually because of our family. Because in the family, these things were eaten till we were young. So that means it's just like we are used to eat it. But we have to have the hunger to eat and we have to have the hunger to try something new. And if we try to taste the sweetness of the lilas, as we share it here, then slowly we will get used to that taste and we will miss it if it's not there. And by this way, actually, we will get the taste more and more and we get more hungry. We want to have it. I am very hungry and I want to have it. And then even I'm stepping over some things which would be in the way. For example, false ego is saying, ah, but has it to be in that time or have it to, to be with this and that person or whatever, you know, sometimes the mind is very strange. We all know that. But anyway, we are just stepping over that and we eat. We eat it again and again and we get used to it. So it's very clear how is the way. Because Goranga Sundara said, we have to have pure hearts. We have to have the pure bowl to get it filled. We have to have the hunger, otherwise we will not beg for it. So if we get a little bit from this sharings, then we will try it. Then we will develop a taste by trying it. And then we will come to the stage of rati, real hunger. I want it, I want it, I need it, I cannot live without it. And then, in this way, actually, we will have more and more of this prasadi. And the ears will be filled up, like Tarun Baba said. Thank you very much. I just want to give this picture. Actually, it's for my mind that I understand it better. Because I'm useless, I cannot remember anything. So I have to draw my pictures for the feeling that it sticks somehow. And I have a taste to hear Suniti's words more because she was broken, actually. So maybe we can give her a try if she remembers. I'm so sorry. Our connection is today very bad, but uh, makes us so eager to come listen to you by grace of the Internet. <laughs> Ah, actually, I was almost through with it. It was this feeling. I try to confer my feelings about missing Gurudev. And at the same time, he's present, you know, like all present. And I was reflecting on this, that what it does to me is that to make all the feelings, all my desires, all my aspirations, to go more internal that is only i wanted to share that that what i can observe in myself that this um, internalization is taking place by gurudev's desire with all of us and uh, it is a beautiful thing to like to come back to your points to clean the container of the heart and to be able to receive more from within and not be like a baby like me. I am in this way a very baby-like disciple, always asking, and is this right? Is this thank you? Only love is the cause for relishing 
the Lord's sweetness. Without love, nothing of the Lord's sweetness can be relished. Only Radha is the cause that we can taste the sweetness. That's the point. Only love means Radha. Sorry, I have to say that because <laughs> only Radha is the cause <laughs> that we can taste the sweetness. In all rasas, whoever wants to have any rasa anyway, he cannot taste it without Radharani. Even if you are in Sakya, you will not taste without Radharani. Only love, only our Swamini is the cause. Jai Shirani. Without Radha, nothing of the Lord's sweetness can be relished. And again, this sweetness can be relished according to the amount of love we feel for the Lord. Or for our Swamini. We can know whether a person loves our Swamini or not, and how much he loves her according to the amount that that person relishes the sweetness of Radharani. Shri Radhika's love is unlimited and therefore only she can relish Krishna's sweetness to the utmost. No one else but she has unlimited love and therefore no one else but she can relish Krishna's endless sweetness to the utmost. I feel like someone should comment this because Baba is saying every sentence twice. He just changes the, the, the order of the words. He's repeating every sentence. This we, we discussed before, Kishore. This is Baba wants to say us, Baba wants really to say us that we should uh, we should try to attain this position as a manjari because this is the highest love possible for the Jiva. So therefore he is repeating it so many times. And Gora Goranga Sundara, Suniti and Goravani, they all said the same thing that we should really try to be close to Radhika because Mahaprabhu said in the when we go back in the purport that Mahaprabhu said every devotee relishes his love accord relishes the divine couple according to his love. So we are Radhik Sneha. Therefore we have the love more for Radhika than for Krishna. So for us it is very, very imperative, very mandatory that we follow Manjari Bhav Sadhana. So this is the highest love possible for all Jivas. This is what Baba is trying to explain to us. And without this love, without actually Radhika, without the Kripa of Swamini, we cannot enter this inner circle. And that means Guru and Guru Manjari. So this is what Baba wants to say to us. We should not take care for, for the four dharmas in life. We should go for the fifth. And this is Prema. And the highest Prema is in the heart of the Manjaris. So it's, this is how I understand this passage, the paragraph Baba is repeating, making the point. It is said that, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Eva Ke. You know, when you repeat something, it is the point, is to be made. So Baba here is clearly making the point that don't waste your time 
with anything else. Follow your inner bath. Okay, someone wants to be with Krishna on the cowherd fields. That is the bath he has to desire and he has to perfect. We are hankering for the inner circle of Swamini, uh, Swami's mantra. So this is what we have to perfect. Don't don't go for anything else. So perfect your love and perfect your bath. This is what Baba is trying to say according to my little understanding. And this is the verse 66 of the 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Sarva Dhamana Parijaja Mam Mam Ekam Sharanam. Take shelter of my one and forget about all other things like Dharma and all this religious, which is also man made, you know. Yeah people made religious, all kind of religious, like social structures and all these things. Forget about all this and just hanger for the lotus feet of my one. And then it's given the real goal of life from Radhika herself, actually, through her maidservant, handed down to us, making little pieces for the mouth that it fits in. But here we also comes to point in view, like Goranga Sundara said, this, what you just said, Goravani, this is for us. This is for us in the Swat, uh, Satachia and Snikta assembly and association. Because if you say, if you translate this verse in a general population, you will not, you will not get the point home. You will not, for saying it in elf meter, you know, but you will not. You will not get the point home because they will say, no, 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 no. Mame come is, is Krishna, you know. But actually, Rasika devotees, they can take one verse, like Narayan Maharaj did in this wonderful book. They can take one verse of the Bhagavatam and they can show you in every verse there is Swami, there is Radhika. So this is what Rasika actually means. When I heard this the first time, my my stupid mind was saying, what is Gurudev saying here? Mame come is meaning, this is Krishna speaking. But this is Rasika. This is the, 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 what they understand, what they feel. And Rasika always is higher in one sense than, than literal meaning. So the Rasika translation, of course, means Mamikam Krishna has say he's showing Radhika, the lotus feet of Radhika. But it, again, Baba is saying in the par paragraph, this is not for everyone. Not everyone has the appreciation. Not everyone has the capacity to understand this. So just see how fortunate we all are to sit here and to, to just agree and say, yes, this means Radhika. Go into another assembly, they will defeat you. They will say no. So we are we have to stay where we are. Rupa Nuka means we follow Rupa Goswami. We follow Rupa Manchari. And in our truly wonderful assembly, we know this Mamekam means actually Radhika. Yeah, is the same thing with the chanting of Harinama Sankirtana. Many devotees in many bhavas or without bhavas are chanting Harinama Sankirtana and they meditate on meaning which are important and according to their bhavas. And Harinama has unlimited meanings because there are so many devotees on different levels of love. But like Tarunji said, we have to be focused in our bhav and from this bhav chant Harinam. And then all understanding also should be through this filter, through, from this direction. And for that is necessary to be fixed really in our bhava. Otherwise, it is impersonal approach to Harina. Without Baba, if we are chanting without Baba, any Baba, <coughs> this is impersonal. It will bring some benefits, of course, be because this is the power of Holy Name. But if it's chanting true, specific, desirable Baba, <laughs> then love can appear. 
because love will be focused and directed to someone whose name with love I'm chanting. This is the exchange of sadaka and sadhya, goal of his love. Otherwise, it will be for sure aparat or the best nama aparat. But what brings shuddha nama is swarup and pure loving relationship. This brings swar pure chanting. Otherwise, I pure mm -hmm. chanting is not possible. I remember, I remember a very nice point Baba is making in the Shikshastakam. Uh, I think, or in Guru Tattva, I think Shikshastakam. He says, the chanting of the holy name brings you to Diksha, to Satguru. And chanting the Harinam Japa with Diksha brings you to Prema. So now that we are here, we know what actually this means. So Baba is saying in the beginning, we chant the holy name. But like you said, without identification, but with eagerness and desire. So it will lead you to a Sadhguru who will give you Diksha. And then Baba is saying, when you receive this Diksha, Harinam Chapa will give you Prema. So now we know why. Because actually, within the process of Diksha, there is one very important point, the Sita Pranali, the revelation of your eternal form. Diksha is not completed without you receiving this form. So now this sentence is very clear. Mm -hmm. Because when you chant Harinam with Diksha, with self-identification, with the Stai bath, this will lead to Prema, otherwise not. Yes, and Baba is giving wonderful example of that in one of his commentary when he is saying shiksha, diksha and shiksha are rasa. What does it mean are rasa? How can we have rasa without prema? Diksha and shiksha together has to be realized. And what does it mean realization? Swimming, drowning in rasa with loving Ishtadev. So Diksha, like Baba, Tarun Babaji said very nicely, with Swarup and instructions, Shiksha, how to think like according to te, that Swarup, how to feel like that Swarup, how to serve like that Swarup will bring slowly devotee in the ocean of rasa with his beloved Ishtadev. So Shiksha and Diksha always bring to the finally, ultimately to the rasa or pure love and exchange of Prema or Mahababa or whatever with Ishtadev. They are not separate. They are not independent of each other. I hope it's not so complicated. Radhe, Radhe. There are just a few more lines. Do we want to finish the verse or how do you feel? Yes, yes, go, go for it. It's so sweet, the last paragraph. Okay. She Radhika's love is unlimited, so she is able to fully taste his unlimited sweetness and the sweetness of his chewed bitter leaves. Through this love, only Radhika is able to relish all of my nectarian sweetness. Chaitanya Charitamrita. Swamini thinks, if I must reward Tulsi, then I should give her this most tasty delicacy. But Tulsi, being partial to Swamini, will not even relish it when it is chewed 
only by Krishna. It must be chewed by Sri Radhika especially. She is ever begging for Swamini's lip nectar. Just as Sri Radhika does not accept any eatable which is not first enjoyed by Krishna, so the manjaris do not accept anything which is not first tasted by Sri Radhika. Hence, the lip nectar of the yugala is ever coveted by the maidservant. Swamini, who is affectionate to her millions of maidservants, revives Tulsi with the nectar of her lotus feet and the nectar from her lips. Not only that, but she grants it to Tulsi by embracing her, kissing her, and transferring Krishna's chewed betel leaves from her mouth into Tulsi's mouth. After looking in all four directions to see if nobody will notice it, Tulsi feels blessed by getting this reward. Sri Banga Vihari Vidyalang Vidyalankar adds, Sometimes Tulsi may get the jude beetle leaves before Swamini brushes her teeth after taking her meals. Then the transcendental revelation disappears. <coughs> Tulsi opens her mouth, but she doesn't get the chewed beta leaves, so she cries with tear-filled throat. Oh, Radhe, Vinodini, oh, Empress of the Kunja, oh, beloved of Krishna, oh, my Ishwari, after your erotic battle, you both chew beta leaves. And after chewing it, you look in all four directions before you push it from your own mouth into mine. Oh, fortunate girl, please be merciful to me in so many ways. Affectionately consider me to be yours, your mind melting of affection. Thus ends the verse 93.